Hello and welcome to another live edition of Theory Craft. I'm Ben, he's Jack. We're two dudes that nerd out about everything sci-fi or just anything that is into our fancy. This week, I want to try and sort of delve into the god-awful attempt that Cartoon Network had done for their live adaptations of their biggest franchise to date, Ben 10. Now, as a cartoon series, I think Ben 10 has got a lot of potential. Like, it's not often you have many kids that are actually a hero. It's more often not a sidekick. But the thing is, with these live adaptations, is I think either I'm expecting way too much from them or it's just the fact that they had no hope in actually making the movie because it feels more of a student film than it does a high budget movie that costs them nearly 70 million dollars per movie yeah yeah this is the thing that i wanted to try and That's figure not out how much it cost did it well it was I think it was 67 million for the first movie and it was 69 for the second one. Right, stream's over. That just oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so this is it. This is what like me and Jack like to do most of all is do the nick picky gritty stuff on these so-called big budget movies. Although to be fair, that apparently is classed as a low budget film. Most high budget movies are between 100 million and so on. But it's all relative to what it is you're trying to achieve, I suppose. Yeah, of course. But the thing, the thing that I find the most ridiculous out of both of these movies is that despite the fact that it centers around Ben 10 and that the whole point is that he can shapeshift into 10 different aliens... The first movie only uses four, and the second movie only uses three. Because? Just because? Well, I'm imagining they only managed so little because, obviously, it was budgetary costs. But then, if that's the case, why not just try and fund it better so then you can give the character justice? What do you think with like, Cartoon Network? Well, surely with the network which they've accumulated over time, well, the thing is, like, Cartoon Network uh, is either owned by or owns, I don't know which way around it is, Bandai, the toy company. So most of their TV shows obviously have all the toy merch and they will get a large percentage of it along the way. But the thing is, like, these two movies, despite the budget, it feels even more cheap than what it should be. I mean, let's have a... Let me just have a gander. Uh, for Let's take, for example, the exact the actual device itself, the Omnitrix. Now, this is meant to be a piece of alien technology. It's meant to be, obviously, engineered to be... Well, it was supposed to be a universal translator device, which then ends up becoming a weapon, because obviously it's Ben 10. Yeah. But this... This is the actual Ben 10 actor wearing the Ben 10 Omnitrix for this movie. Now, to me, it looks so damn cheap that even the toy version of it would have been better. I, like, I, could, I could have sworn it was the toy. Well, this is it. I mean, I look into this and... You would imagine that perhaps they could make it a bit more mechanical. You could have a few more lights... But if anything, it just looks like they just got a random leather strap and then added in some pipe cleaners. <laughs> but it, it's just so damn cheap, this Omnitrix. I actually own the Omnitrix from Alien Force because I, I'm a huge nerd. I collect random things, as you can probably tell by this screen, but well, the stuff behind me. But at least with those toys, it looked pretty damn close to the cartoon series to a degree yeah, yeah. with this I, I, I'm trying to figure out where all their money went to when they actually made this movie because none of it seems to have been gone into special effects 
Yeah, there's like, like another thing which we'll probably get into. Like you mentioned something about how dark most of the film is, and is that uh, because they wanted they wanted to mask all like how crap it actually was? Well, yeah, that's for the second movie, which is Alien Swarm. Most of the transformations are done at night time, besides one of them, which is Nanomech. But the t- majority of the film. It looks so grainy. It looks like it's been shot through like a sepia filter. Everything looks like a dark, like rusty orange. And then the only times that Ben will transform, the quality of it looks better. Like the transformations do look a little bit better. But it's only because it's so dark, you can't see it fully to understand whether or not there's any flaws with it. Yeah, like it probably looks like it was filmed on a Huawei camera. Mm. <laughs> Or just anything Android. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, like, I, I'm i looking at some of the alien... Well, the Race Against Time aliens, okay? Let's have yeah. a showcase of this. I'm looking forward to this bit. So, hang on, let me... So, this is the main baddie for Race <laughs> Against Time. <laughs> this I'm is sorry. Eon. This is Eon. The, the whole premise around the movie is that Eon is basically a future version of Ben. The Eon character is actually an alien within the Omnitrix. And the whole premise is the fact that he's gone back in time because that's literally his main ability is manipulating time. And he's basically gone back in time to try and alter the timeline so he can appear sooner to do more damage to whatever it is he wants to do. Right. It's such a pathetic way that he gets defeated in the end. It's so pathetic that it's literally Gwen just like talks him out of being controlled by Eon, and that's it. And there you go. <laughs> it's just like you build up the, this so-called villain, which Ivan Ooze would probably be better off, because he looks like Ivan Ooze's distant cousin with all the purple and black. Yeah, but I suppose if it's going to be like a film directed at kids, like mainly kids are not going to notice these little things, but as adults, you notice everything. Yeah, well, the thing is, on the arm, both of the arms have those weird, like, protector things. It looks like shin pads that have just been spray painted black and purple. I thought they were. I thought they looked like the old ones I used to wear when I was playing football. (laughs) Probably was. Probably was. But the funny thing is, the guy that plays this baddie, did you ever see a TV series called Relic Hunter? Um, I definitely have heard of Relic Hunter. Yeah, I might have watched it. So there's a character in it that works with the main actress called Nigel, which is her assistant. That's that guy. Is it? Yeah, that is the guy that plays Nigel. <laughs> That's just spun you... me for a loop, actually. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll zoom in a bit if I can. No, it won't let me. Um, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, not Nigel from Leon. There you go. So there's a bit more of a close up to his Uh, face. Oh, yeah, I see it now. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) it's just so brilliant how shoddy, but it's just such cheap gimmicks when it comes down to it. I'm sorry, I don't need the picture again, but you know, on his helmet, Mm. did he they happen to get the LED lights off you? (laughs) <laughs> Probably because uh, well, they, they look they look like your portals in the background. Pretty much, like, <laughs> it literally looks like they've gone to get a very cheap paintballing helmet that's got a clear visor and stuck some random LEDs inside. Yeah, like God bless eBay. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. I really don't know. So here we go. This is one of the transformations in the second Ben Ten movie, Alien Swarm. Humongousaur. Now, the thing is, right, it does look pretty well done because obviously he's meant to be a giant dinosaur. It does does look cool, to be fair. But, like I say, because it's shot in the dark, you can't get the full aspect of how he's supposed to look because it's in the dark. So it gave them less of a thing to worry about. But then I'm wondering whether it was harder to try and make him darker because obviously you'd have to do the original idea and then put the shadowing over the top. Why not just film in the de- have it filmed for the day? I'm not too sure, but I just... I, there was a few things which I was noticing when I was going through like a bunch of scenes that you were linking to me and a few I found, but I was like kind of 
trying to I was trying to screenshot all these pictures of uh, the actual film at nighttime, zoom in on them, see if I could find any what I call Shrek lines, like any green screen, like because yeah. sometimes they forget to edit out the green screen, like around like the head and, sh- and things like that. I don't know. I mean, here we go. So this is meant to be grey matter from Alien, the first one, Race Against Time. Like it's so low res, <laughs> but it. Like the thing is, it's meant to be a a very small alien, but it just looks so low quality. The CGI that it's just how does everything else in these shots look in focus and perfect, but the actual animation doesn't look anywhere near that. <laughs> no, it doesn't look any. I mean, they could have easily have just got the texture of a frog because this alien is similar-ish looking to a frog, but they made it just. I... <laughs> I struggle so hard to figure out where the CGI went into these films because I know obviously it's been a few years since these films have been made, but at the same point, like it's it not wasn't too far off from what we've really got now. No. To be honest, no, exactly. Like, where the hell did any of the budget go? Oh, well, it didn't go on the CGI, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, this is what I'm curious about. I mean, let's see, what's the next thing I can show you? That's meant to be in Alien Swarm. you got Nanomech. Right. So it's basically like a really teeny tiny alien. This is the third alien they use, because they only have three in total. Yeah. And it's meant to be like a android-ish like, alien creature, like organa- organic and cybernetic. Yes. But it's, again, like, I can barely tell what it's supposed to be because of this weird filter that makes it all look rusty and orange and weird. I don't know. Maybe they put it through Instagram first. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think Instagram it... Filters. I don't... Th- I want... Well, the things I wonder if whether Instagram got the inspiration through because I think this was before Instagram came about. Yeah, because when was this made again? I think this was made back in 2009. 2009 yeah okay but it's just like with this like the, with i imagine just with the budget that nickelodeon has well it was it was uh cartoon network is who owns cartoon uh, network, ben 10. uh i mean i try to figure out what their budget was because if it was meant to be 69 million dollars that they supposedly had for budget did they only use a hundred thousand? I mean, I don't know. Like, obviously, the, the actors that they chose were nobodies, and I don't think they've ever done anything since. Not from what I've seen, no. No. So they can't have been paid that much to do it. They probably don't want to be even recognised for being paid for it. But <laughs> let's have a look. What else have we got here? Um. I mean, you only got a few other ones because we've only seen a handful so far. So here's more of a showcase of how e- Eon from the first movie is. It, okay. Like, I can understand what they're trying to go for, but at the same point, like, everything is so dark that you can't tell where what the point was. Like... <laughs> I have a feeling it's just trying to di- trying to disguise maybe some errors or something. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty damn sure that's what the the only reason for it was. Because if you got so little faith in your movie that you have to shoot everything in the dark, why f- shoot it in the first place? Well, yeah, I mean, if you're not going to go the whole hog with it, but obviously, like we're going to later on descend into how you feel it could be made better. I mean, would you still have the same story? So, right, yeah, I'll, well, we can discuss that in a moment. Yeah. This is how Humongous Source should look like from, like, cartoon references. So, like I said earlier, it's not too far off. Yeah. But at the same point, like, I don't understand why everything had to be do- done so dark just to do anything. I have a feeling just because it's going to be easy, it's going to be easier for this, like for the guys in CGI, you like to paint stuff out. Because if it's in the day, in the if it's in the daytime, if you go in frame by frame, it's going to be tough to paint errors out. So I'm guessing there was a lot of them. 
<laughs> probably. And then he probably. just went, oh, bugger this, we'll just shoot the whole thing black. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, as a whole, I think the only reason why these films were made at all was just purely for the sake of trying to prove a point that it can be done. But, but, like, but at the time, were they trying to push any toy sales? I think they were probably trying to push it further, and obviously it failed like a lead balloon. Oh, yeah. But given the opportunity, there for the Race Against Time one, I would change so much. Yeah. I would... Like the main, I wouldn't even have it based around time travel because, for whatever reason, time travel never seems to translate well for Americans. Even when they did Endgame for Avengers, it was an interesting premise, but it opened the floodgates for so many loopholes that it couldn't really explain itself out of it. Well, yeah, I get, I get that, but at least, um, but at least for Avengers Endgame, they actually went to a bit of effort to have an established set of rules for time travel but time travel for every kind of film and series is so different like even you've got oh we, well, how do you say it timey wimey timey wimey wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff and that's from and i guess like time travel for doctor who's completely different it's a what, different concept completely yeah well that's where that reference comes from and then obviously you got back to the future and all that but for the time travel for this like how i'm struggling to get my head around it well, the whole idea was the fact that the future version of Eon comes back just to try and speed things up. That was literally all it was. That's why I don't think it should have been about time travel, because at the end of the day, you can probably set in motion your plans a bit sooner, but then what happens after that? Like You sort of get stuck at the end of it going, right, I've achieved everything, what do I do now? Yeah. <laughs> so, but the, that's literally... Like, that's why it's so, such a letdown by the end of it that Gwen literally has to talk to him to bring Ben back into control of it, and then he ends up literally just going underneath the clothing off this alien that he's just shifted into to press the button on the Omnitrix to turn him back. What a wet fart of an ending. Yeah, exactly. So what I would have done instead, as a premise for a movie, is just sort the idea of time travel... But have it so that it's more about Ben, more of like an actual origin movie instead of trying to piggyback off what's actually been set in motion already. Yeah, because obviously there, there's going to be people who might be, I mean, say if people are seeing this for the first time, they might never have seen Ben 10 before. Exactly. And at least it brings a new audience. You could easily rework things better because with the original cartoon series, all of the different aliens that he shifted into had a black and white colour scheme because he wore a black and white shirt. Yeah. Which I never understood why. But then when you get like the next series, which is uh, Ultimate... Well, sorry, it's Alien Force, Ultimate Alien, and so on, they don't get the black and white suit. They just look like... The, he looks just like the aliens that he transforms into, which, again, is fair enough. That makes That's sense. Fair, yeah. So why not just have it showcase that instead? But also trying to make it so you try and actually make the aliens actually showcase all 10 aliens because that was the one thing that I was let down by bo both of these movies. The whole premise of this character is he has 10 aliens available. They barely use half of the list. What's the point? Yeah, Ben Ten. Yeah, I mean the fact that he's called Benjamin Tennyson. I I, I hate. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, I know. See, the thing is, Cartoon Network, Cartoon Network really were a bit lazy when they came up with this cartoon idea that he's literally called Benjamin Tennyson, <laughs> and he's Ben Ten. Like, it's such lazy writing, but it works for what it is. Oh, sorry, but even though I know it's cheesy as hell, I love that name for the. Yeah. I just love that. Benjamin Tennyson. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like. There was, like, 
as they've done the series over, they've reboot, they've done so many different series, and then they've rebooted it recently. So they've redone the style choice on some of the the cartoon versions of the aliens, which is fair enough. They're trying to make things a bit more interesting. But the thing is, it's like there are so many different aliens. I. <laughs> They said that in the original series that there's 10,000 species within this Omnitrix. Omnitrix, yeah. And so the only way he can gain access is that they're all split into groups of 10, which is fair enough. But the thing is, it's like it wasn't actually intended for him originally. It was actually intended for his grandfather because his grandfather was part of a secret organization that was all about keeping aliens away from Earth. Which yeah. were called the plumbers. Don't understand why they were called plumbers, but that was just their code name. Plumbers, brickers, scaffolders. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like because of the fact that obviously Ben Ten is like a biological ancestor to his grandfather, when he spotted the device, it recognized partial DNA and that's why it got onto him. Right. Fair enough. But then <sighs> it was just it was it was an interesting series to start off with, but it was the fact that this 10 year old kid basically managed to kick the ass out of this, this main bad guy called Vilgax managed to defeat him so easily, but his grandfather in his prime wasn't able to. Given the fact that obviously his grandfather didn't have the Omnitrix, he had like other things instead. I know. I know, I think it's just a load of rubbish. But given, like I say, given the opportunity, if we were to do this film right, I don't know whether to bring in Vilgax straight away or whether have it just in the idea that it's an origin movie and he's having to fight against some random means because throughout the original series, you don't meet Vilgax until halfway through. He keeps sending these random Sentinel android things after him. Which I can un- I could kind of see done in the movie. It could be almost like there's a mercenary bounty hunter alien that's after him, right. like one of the original episodes. And then at the very end of the movie, obviously he goes back and so reports back to Vilgax, and then it could lead into a sequel later on. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't think they even hint towards the idea of Vilgax in either of the movies, despite the fact that Vilgax is the main big bad because he was after the Omnitrix in the first place. That's why it got sent to Earth. <laughs> yeah, it's... This is, this is a bit... Yeah, this is, uh, well, a bit of a confusing mess. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is... All these different aliens are... are there's different types, there's different specialities, and so on. But at the same point, they always seem to skim over the fact that he's just randomly able to know what to do with them when he first gets them. Which doesn't ever happen. Well, it's like at the very beginning of the series, like the very early on stuff, he did actually try to figure out what they were. But then when he got newer and newer aliens, he just somehow knew what to do. Yeah, again, I know. But again, kids won't notice these things. They'll just accept it at face value for what it is. Which is why, well, I understand it's meant to be intended for kids, these movies. you got to at least treat kids with an element of intelligence instead of just going, ah, they're kids, they don't need to know. Yeah, like, oh, the kids won't notice. <laughs> it's just... But, like, if you're going to do, like, this kind of thing, would you still keep it, like, kind of, uh, I don't know, like, you, PG, 13? Obviously, I still keep it. it, I still keep it at, like, a kiddish level, maybe PG. I wouldn't do you. Obviously, I mean, it is, like I say, it's meant to be intended for kids, but it's an action thing. Like, you have to have action. It's more Which, cheap. again, is another thing that was lacking throughout both of these movies. <laughs> Well, it just, this thing just this thing just never ever. Well, like all everything which I've watched of it, it just never got going. Really, no. I was just, it's kind of like you're just waiting for the whole thing to start properly. But this is it. I mean, like there are a mo- there's a few bits and bobs of fight scenes in- when he transforms into the aliens. 
But there's like there's the scene in Race Against Time where he's heat blast, and he he's literally just like walking fire. But you look at the CGI and it's so shoddy. Like there's no attempt at making it actually track the fire underneath his feet. Like <laughs> if if he's meant to be like this almost as hot as the sun. Like at maximum power, he could literally be like the power, like as hot as the sun. So I would say two degree minimum, he'd probably melt the sidewalk. Like he'd probably melt the tarmac underneath him. It's little details like that that have been missing. Yeah, prob- yeah just like or well, kind of like just like melting car tires and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like because when glass gets hot, like bursting out windows, things exactly. like that. Exactly. But no. Like that was the first fight scene I think he has against Eon, and he's in the pitch black. The fact that he's on fire, but nothing around him you can see. When there's fire, there's light. Therefore, you can see everything around you, but you can't see anything around him. Exactly, and just like if like if you're gonna have like light on the character, like that, like because there was a film which I watched just recently, which is called like Project Power. And it's just like the way that they did like tracking and everything of fire. It's only an eight minute like behind the scenes thing, but I encourage anybody to watch it. It's like a showcase on how you do special effects with things like fire and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just like when you have like the like the light which is radiating from whatever space that you're around, you have reflections and so on. But again, kids won't notice these things. But then when you get older, it's these little nitpicky things which really annoy the hell out of you. Exactly. I mean, I don't. This the other thing as well is they didn't even spend a lot of time showcasing how he transforms. I think they did a bit more of an uh, like attempt when it came to the Alien Swarm movie, where they show him actually slowly transform into the different aliens, but there wasn't much of an effort. But at the same point, that I obviously I know it would take up time in the movie. But that's the point. He transforms. You need to show the transformations. It's not just literally, and he's an alien. Like, there has to be an element of transformation because it depends on what he's transforming into. Well, with Origins, you have to you have to do it right. You have to go in depth with explanations. You just you have to. You ain't got a choice in that. And because otherwise, if you don't if you don't go through that, especially for new people who are coming to watch Ben Ten. Like a sequel, anyway, will just be a death nail. Yeah, exactly. I mean, as a whole, I think these movies were just literally made for the sake of trying to drive merchandise, which obviously it failed at because I don't even know if there is any mer- movie merchandise because I think it literally just went straight to TV. It wasn't like an actual movie movie. No, because like, I, and plus, like, I think. From what, I re- from what I researched about it, like the viewership on it was so poor as mm. well. Like nobody watched it. Well, I don't think he, they even properly advertised it. It was just randomly on Cartoon Network one day, and that was it. Yeah, just just stick it on, just hope for the best. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just it's a very weird thing, Ben Ten, because, like I say, now it's been rebooted. Now he's back to being a kid again. I wonder how many more series are going to spin off again and then reboot it. It seems like they're trying to do the DC approach that it takes five years for them to set up the universe and then go back again and start again. Which is... <laughs> well, it's just more, it's more about them milking the money than it is in terms of actually doing anything plot-wise. Oh, just it's just I just miss the I just miss the old days of just storytelling. I miss it so much. So do I. But this is the issue: is these days people will only make a story if they can make money. Of course, of course. I mean, pretty much like you're getting it, everything at the minute is being rebooted. Even the Fresh Prince of Bel Air of all things is getting rebooted. <laughs> yeah, I I saw the trailer for it, and I I'm not watching it. Uh, there, there's certain things you need to just leave alone. But the thing I said to you before is the only reason why there's so many reboots is because people just don't have ideas. Nobody's like, got they, original ideas anymore. No, everyone's bored. They, everyone's just had no I- original ideas for the past decade. Well, it just it just seems with like movies and series now. I 
I just think it's just wishful thinking of like directors and producers just thinking that lightning is going to strike twice. Yeah. Um, which does, which usually not good nine out of 10 times doesn't happen. No, but all I can say as a whole with these movies is that it was an attempt. And it, that, well, that's all I can it, say. Well, at least they tried, I suppose. <laughs> they were very trying when making these films. <laughs> very trying. I mean, the thing is, is like the director for both of these movies is the guy that plays Bill from Bill and Ted. Which I am. I saw the trailer. I'm actually quite looking forward to it. I, mm. changed, I changed my mind about it. But yeah, I that that just spun me through a loop that day when you told yeah. me at the beginning. Yeah, Alex Winters. I find that so hilarious that the thing is, all of the movies he's actually directed are so obscure from one another. But I've not even heard of the best part of 80% of his movies because I think they're so obscure that nobody really cares. But no, I'm sure he's a decent director, but you can't give him a bit of a little bit of wiggle room in terms of what he actually makes. Yeah, sure thing, yeah. But I think that's pretty much me and you ranted out today. It's not an awful lot. No, I know, but still, it is so it is still something. But yeah, with like with Ben Ten, it's it's something it's something old yet it's something that i think could be completely brand new as long as it does have the right approach for a, for another live action which just it has to have it has to have a lot of effort being put into this and it, it's just even though you're going to a lot of people would assume that kids are, oh kids will just know yeah but it's going to appeal to everybody not mm -hmm. just the kids you know especially if you're telling like a well not a brand new story an old an older story but with a more kind of in-depth feel for it. I mean, at the end of the day, if and when they do remake these live adaptations, they need to have a better CGI budget. Oh, yeah. They need to actually know which aliens they're actually choosing from. But most importantly, they actually have to have a villain that actually seems a menacing villain. Because... <laughs> You had Eon for Race Against Time, which yeah. just seemed a bit of a wet blanket, and then you had this random alien swarm of nanobots for the second movie, which didn't really have much of a presence. If anything, it felt like a knockoff version of some other villain that I'm sure has been used time and time again in other like movies, where it's basically a guy's an amalgamation of all these insect-type yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah. But it's such a cliche that it doesn't even surprise you because you can literally look. He literally wears a, like one of those hat and coats. Like when you, whenever there's a baddie that's an amalgamation of insects, it's a big bowler hat and it's a trench coat every time. Why? What is it with Americans and like why is that the get up for someone that's made up of random insects? I don't know. I'm like well. I guess you could discount Men in Black. You remember the you know, remember the insect alien guy from Men in Black? Yeah, but to be <laughs> fair, he was he was one giant alien that crushed himself inside somebody else's skin. Like that was a different way of doing things. Yeah, like do, like, do you any of you guys remember the guy who's like, I'm looking for a cat. <laughs> Give me sure. Give me sure. <laughs> oh god. But yeah, I mean, this is it for today's episode. It's been a bit of a glitchy one due to some minor issues, but it's been a bit of a glitchy topic because it's a glitchy movie. Yeah, but anybody who's seen it live, like later on, I'm sure like the fluff will be cut out later, so it'll be a bit shorter. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, short and sweet episode this week of me ranting away. It's Jack's turn next time. Any idea what you're going to talk about next time? I'm hopefully going to be delving into a lot more of the cartoony stuff, which stuff which it, I don't think has even been touched, like in terms of live action. But some stuff I would love to I would love to see experimented with. Uh, definitely not cat dog. That just ain't no. gonna happen. So you guys are just going to have to wait and see for now. So I've got a few ideas, but I've just got to chat with Ben over the next week. No worries. So thanks again for joining us. Short and sweet episode. So stay safe, and we'll see you all soon. Later. Bye.